Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. All right. Hey, welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a champion sitting here with me who I've known for years and I always looked up to and admired, and his name is Boyer Co. and he's won, uh, I mean, I went and did a Wikipedia, you had so many titles that I don't even know where to begin. Well, to be honest with you, Rick, I, I, to, I've competed for a long time, but I really wasn't that much into competition. I more or less looked at the bodybuilding competition was just a way to measure my progress. Right. And it really wasn't even so a matter about what the judges gave me because, quite honestly, I never had a whole lot of respect for the judges. <laughs> I don't think anybody did. You know, particularly in the years with the AAU. I was thinking about it when I was driving over here, and I recall a time, I think it was back in, oh, it must have been 1968, when uh, Jim Hazlip won the Mr. America. And one of the contestants in the, the contest, and I'm sure you remember him, was Dr. Craig Whitehead. Oh, of course, sure. And and at that time, this was during the Vietnam War, when you went into the service, if you were a physician, a doctor, you went in at, with the title of captain. That's right, you're so an officer. So here, here, here he is, he's a captain. And these AAU officials just talked to us like we were a, a bunch of pigs or something, you know? Yeah. And I remember that was the last contest that Craig competed, and he says, you know, he says, I'm a captain in the Air Force. I'm a, I don't have to take this. And he got it and walked out of the prejudging, and, of course, I was only, oh, maybe 18, 19. And, you know, you, you don't know really what to do, so I, I didn't leave, but I admired him for that. You know, it just wasn't worth it. So what I looked for in the contest was a way of measuring my progress, and fortunately I had some guys that I've grown up with who was brutally honest with the way you look. I mean, yeah. you might win a contest and say, hey, you don't look worth a damn. You didn't improve from that. So, so that's what I kind of gauged my progress on, was, was that. So it was not so much trying to win the contest, but just self-improvement. But you won a lot of contests. Yeah, well, it was around a long, I had a, a, an interesting career, a long career. Yeah, and you yeah. had a perfect score in one of them, I read. Yeah, well, you know, I don't remember any of this. You, you can <laughs> barely remember who won one contest to the next when the guy talks about Oh, I was second or third. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? It, 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 yeah, it, everybody it, it up there's a winner. Sure. They're all yeah. working hard. They're all winners. Exactly. And it's basically someone's opinion of you. Well, that's what it is. It's always just a matter of an opinion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I did the same thing. I competed a couple of contests when I was training in Venice, and I was into wrestling back then. I thought, I don't want to do this. It's, it's a trophy, and I know how I look. I look in the mirror, and I'll put it in the ring and be on TV, and that'll make me money, and the trophy won't. Very true. So Very I, very I true. took it to that level. You started training at what age? Actually, uh, seriously, uh, I was 14, but by the time I was 13, I started fooling around with it. And you have to remember, I was back in the days where the only exposure to bodybuilding was what you got in the magazines. I recall the first magazine I looked at was Strength and Health. Sure. So you always looked at it and tried to read it, and at that time, everything was weightlifting. Hoffman reluctantly put bodybuilding into the magazine, That's so true. you only got little bits and pieces, and then later on, Joe came with his magazine, and in the magazine that I truly loved was Iron Man. You know, yeah. Perry Rader only came out with that once every two months, but right. God, it was just packed with, you couldn't wait to get the magazine, and it was all black and white except for the cover. But, and, and great photos. Oh, great photos, yeah, yeah, and, and a lot of information. And that's what I was always interested in was the knowledge, how to do something, you know. Did you know a lot about diet back then? Nothing. No. Y did you just eat what J you wanted? Just, uh, I, I read articles about John Grimmick, and he always, and I greatly admired John. And his thing was back in his day, you got to eat a lot to get big. Yeah. So I just ate as much as I could, drank as much milk as I could. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember my, my dad saying he never realized how much our milk bill was until I went off to college and 
He said, I, I must have supported a herd of cattle with the amount of milk you drank. <laughs> My mom did the same thing. She says, I can't believe how much milk you're going through. And then I started drinking extra rich milk because the guys in Venice said, oh, you got to get the extra rich stuff with the cream because the fat gives you more energy to burn, like the real Blair method. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, I remember going to restaurants down at the beach with some of the guys, and they were going to tables and drinking the creamers because it was real cream in there. It wasn't that artificial <laughs> stuff, you know. Got to have that cream. But... Diet wasn't really uh, uh, too knowledgeable a thing back then. We didn't know what to do. Well, uh, the interesting thing, it w diet was never a real key part, and I certainly remember the real Blair area, and, and Larry Scott was, yeah. was more or less poster boy, and I don't know why, but because I could never afford, I was in college, I could never afford the real pl Blair products because they were really expensive at they the very, time. Very. But he was nice enough to send me supplements free of charge which I used I, I I I attempted to try it with the cream and I noticed that I just started to smooth out so I just mixed it with water yeah but uh, it uh, there wasn't a whole lot of knowledge of that and certainly no cardio yeah no nobody cardio. that there wasn't even so much as a stationary bike in the gym nope. when I first started working nope. out. and and, to, and it's a shame to say that but to be honest with you I still hate cardio I just find it boring as hell well it's really funny because Arnold introduced me to Rio and he put me on a program, uh, he had me sign an endorsement, and I started taking his protein and his hydrochloric acid tablets and his B-complex tablets and all that, and I'd go over once a month and stock up, and it was good stuff. And the funny thing is, that little statue right there is a real Blair vitamin B bottle that I put paper mache on. I made a bodybuilder <laughs> out of it, and a light bulb for the head. And it's been sitting there for like 30 years. I, I can re well re <clears throat> recall how expensive his products were, and one of the supplements that that he promoted, which I n I'd never even, never had an opportunity to try. He had something called free amino acids. Yes. And I remember Don Holworth telling me about yes. it. Yes. But he couldn't afford it either. You know, it was like $150 a bottle. And this is back in the mid 60s. That's that, right. That might have been $1,000 worth a day. You just couldn't. That was, that was a year's salary. Of. Yeah. That was you a year's salary. You couldn't, you couldn't even think about S buying something. Somebody like came that. out with his product, his protein, oh, a few years ago, and they, they emailed me about it. And it was still like $300 for like, I don't know, 10 pounds of it. No, I'm not going to spend that on there. There's, there's enough products around. But you trained on eating anything, yet you were massive and ripped. So how did you stay so lean? Well, like in, in most instances with everybody, a lot of it has to do just with genetics. Yeah. You know, my, my dad was never overweight. He was always an athlete, always kept himself in good shape. And I, I, now I did say I ate everything, but I didn't eat a lot of junk. I ate yeah. good food, right. you know. And uh, even today I don't really follow any kind of strict diet. I don't eat any desserts. Well, occasionally I'll have something, but yeah. usually basically protein, vegetables. I don't eat, I try to stay away from red meat. Uh, eat a lot of chicken, turkey, yeah, fish. Basically. Yeah, same stuff. basic stuff. You know, I do take some supplements, some vitamins. Uh, I'm hell, I give hell on the, the fish oil. I believe in that. Yeah. They say it's good for your heart, but nothing uh, very elaborate. Do you still train every day? I, I still train. I train six days a week. Yeah, yeah. It's, hard miles, yeah. <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah. It's it's hard. To, I mean, I don't spend three or four hours in the gym anymore because I don't have time. No. But I, I'm in the gym every morning at 5 o'clock. I'm usually the first guy who walks through the door. And, and I'm in there for about an hour, hour and a half. Tops. Yeah. You don't need more than that. Oh, no. I, I was never a guy that hung around the gym all day long simply because... I always had a job to get to. Well, you know? that's the thing. You know, I mean, I'm the same way. I go in for an hour, maybe an hour, ten minutes with a little cardio, which I do now, and I'm done. I don't want to spend more time than that. Well, yeah, yeah you, you you get in, you get out, and you move on to other things in life. Right. Do you find it hard to maintain uh, uh, muscle density and mass as you get older? Well, I, I think, quite honestly, I never had a problem maintaining muscle mass. I, I was in a, until I was about 50. Yeah, and then I noticed it become harder and harder to hang on to your muscle mass. You know, I keep my body weight at right about two hundred, <laughs> simply because I don't want to get any heavier than yeah. that. You know, but then I'm not sure even if I tried, I could get a lot heavier than that. It gets harder to put on new muscle mass as you get older. It's definitely harder, and and um, I've had some severe injuries from wrestling, so my joints hurt, and my knees, and I go and I train, I get a pretty good pump, and I stay lean. I'm probably twenty five pounds lighter this past six months, which I dropped. But I notice, even in my biceps, I, I notice they don't fill out the skin like they did way back. You know, in, in certain, around the pec, it doesn't fill out like it did. Even though I train hard and eat right, 
it does take a change as you get older. Well, I, one of the things, and, and I've discussed this with a, a lot of people as they get older, no matter how hard you train, you just don't seem to be able to quite get the pump in the muscle right. that you used to. I mean, you, you you train earlier, and sometimes your you muscle gets so pumped you feel like the skin was going to Oh, split. my God, yeah. You, you just don't quite get that feeling anymore. But uh, I've been very fortunate to have no injuries, can still train, uh, I would say, considerably, having nothing extreme. But I've always been a great believer in warming up before yeah. a workout and complete movements, complete extension, yeah. complete contraction, no little half movements. I'm not, I'm not saying that makes a great difference, but uh, it's worked for me. Well, it does because the muscle has a full range of motion. When you do half movements, it's not getting it, obviously. Um, and I've gone through periods myself, just like you're saying, where you go in, you just don't get a pump, and my strength is there, and everything is the same, but there's, no, there's none of that. Now, I started taking uh, wax and maize. You've heard of wax and maize? I'm not familiar with it. I've heard of it. Okay, yeah. it's like a complex carb before you train, and that seemed to help me get a little bit of a pump. Maybe it's the, just a little bit of sugar. Well, I'll give it. that a try. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. That and uh, uh, nitrix, which is uh, supposed to dilate the blood vessels. But, you know, as you get older, you, uh, I remember I was telling my son, I used to go in the gym, and I'd, I'd do a couple of sets of curls, and I couldn't even bend my arms. Oh, yeah. You, would, it's, uh, you definitely don't get that same feeling as you used to. Yeah. You know. um, back then... Um, Steroids weren't a big thing, but there were some, and it, and I took some stuff that that I had gotten from Europe, and I did get good progress off it. And then when I go off, I didn't lose it as much because I didn't overload on it. But you look at the bodies back then, and people had mentioned to me they prefer the golden era, and everybody had a unique body, and you could put masks on everybody. You knew who they were because their bodies were so entirely different compared well, to today. Well, you you could, there's definitely a, a trim, tremendous difference. As a matter of fact. There was a time at the Mr. Olympia, at the introduction of each contestant, the first thing you saw on the screen was a silhouette of each guy. You could immediately identify if that was Frank Zane or yes. Chris Dickerson or something like that. Yes. And, and it does appear to me that everyone looks the same, but I, I really think it's just a matter of progression. And, and you mentioned the steroids, and I've never shied away from that. I, I, one time a guy mentioned that to me. He says, I, I always seem to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Because I go all the way back to when basically steroids first became available. Right. And and it was it was just by accident. Ziegler invented it, obviously for the weightlifting team. Right. How I knew about it so early in life, Alvin Roy, who was from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, was in the service that time, was a captain or colonel in the service from, he was from Baton Rouge, but he was over stationed in Germany. He acquired proper training quarters and proper food for the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. Well, he became friends with Ziegler, so he immediately learned about Dianabol. Yeah, sure. Okay, so when he came back, he was always a great advocate of weightlifting for football teams. Mm -hmm. So Astruma High School in Baton Rouge and then LSU was actually the first weight-trained football team in the nation. And he also gave them Diana Ball. Yeah. Well, it just so happened some of those members lived in the town I grew up in, Lake Charles, so they told me about it. Yeah. So my first experience with it was, I guess, back when I was around 17. Yeah. Now, it made me stronger, Yeah. but I never gained that much weight off it, probably because I simply didn't take enough. And I discussed this with John Grimmick one time. He said, yeah, he said, I was disappointed when I tried it because I didn't really notice any increase in my size. But, I mean... One five milligram tablet yeah. is not good, and that's all you took, you know. Well, I, I remember I was seventeen, and I took it too. I used to get a bottle for eight dollars, and I would do one a day. But I did notice, and it wasn't that much in strength. In the mirror, I did look better, and I got a good. Well, you, you and you and you got harder looking, but yeah. I definitely noticed a, a great increase in my strength because, like I said, yes. I was seventeen. I probably weighed somewhere around one seventy five, one eighty. And my goal always was to bench press 400 before I got out of high school. Right. And I'd kind of hit a sticking point. Well, after that, man, it just shot right past 400, no problem oh, at yeah. all, which was, you know, a, to me, it made me real proud of that. Yeah. Um, did you take anything else besides that? That was all that was available back in those as days. As time went on? Now, as time... Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code, Grayson12, 
on the link below at oldschoollabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson. Personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it will be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.